SQLite, being one of the most popular lightweight file-based database engines, is an open-source, serverless SQL database that stores data in a single file. Widely used in embedded systems, mobile apps, and edge devices, it offers simplicity, reliability, and efficient local storage without requiring complex configurations or a dedicated server. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to build a SQLite agent using Pydantic AI. If you have never heard of Pydantic AI before, Pydantic AI is an open source AI agent framework that integrates structured data validation with LLMs. The framework provides tools for dependency management, function calling, and result validation, ensuring reliable and controlled AI interactions in production applications. This is going to be a beginner-friendly tutorial. The only thing you need is something experienced working with Python and have access to an AI model like OpenAI, Gemini, or Anthropic. Throughout the lesson, you will learn how to create an agent that can list available tables in a database, describe the structure of a specific table, and execute SQL queries based on natural language instructions. To get started, launch your terminal and run the command to install Pydantic AI, OpenAI, and SQL Alchemy. For demonstration purposes, I will be using the Chinook SQLite database, a popular sample database designed to mimic a digital media store. This database contains tables for albums, artists, customers, invoices, and more, making it a great choice for practicing SQL queries. You can download the sample database file from the GitHub link in the description below. To view the Chinook SQLite database, I recommend the InLoop SQLite Viewer, an open source web tool to manage a SQLite database, and you can run SQL queries directly against a SQLite database. Now, let's dive into the SQLite agent development. Create a Python file and name it loadmodels.py to construct the generative models to be used with the agent. To create the SQL toolset for the SQLite agent to use, create a Python file called sql.py. Inside the module, import the required Python packages showing on the screen. We will start out with the list tables function to display the entire table list in a SQLite database. Unlike other AI agent frameworks, in which they come with built-in functions to interact with SQL databases. In Pydantic AI, we have to manage everything on our own. That means we have complete control over the functions and agents' behavior and execution. Noticing that in the function, I am using JSON dumps method to convert the output into string format. That's because generative models normally unable to accept an array object as input and docstring will guide the agent with function usage. Here's the rest of the functions. The describe table function will return a table's metadata, such as column name, column data type, whether a column is a primary key or foreign key, and so on. And the run SQL query function will enable an agent to pass a SQL statement to execute a query. Basically, when we send a request, the agent will analyze the request, run the list tables and describe table functions to figure out the tables and columns it needs to use. Then it will construct the SQL statement and use the run SQL query function to get the final output to be delivered to a user. To create the SQLite agent, create a Python file, and let's name it sqlagent.py. This script will serve as the main entry point, enabling users to send requests to the SQLite agent to interact within SQLite database through natural language queries. In the script, import the Python packages as shown on the screen. We will begin by defining a system prompt. The system prompt is the instruction that tells the AI how to behave when handling SQL queries. In the prompt, 
we will first define the role of the agent. By default, when you send the SQLite agent with a request, it will simply make up a SQL statement and attempt to run the query without knowing what tables are available. To address the issue, we need to explicitly write down an instruction how it should first run the list tables and describe table functions to figure out the target tables to query the data. Then construct the SQL statement to fulfill the request. Now let's define dependencies for our agent. The SQLite agent requires access to the database engine to execute queries. So we will define a dependencies class that provides this engine. Next, define a response model inherits from base model to ensure that the AI returns structured and well-formatted results. Generative AI models often output freeform text, but we want our AI to return predictable responses that can be easily parsed, like structured outputs. With the system prompt, dependencies, and response model in place, we can now create the AI agent. Use the agent class from Pydentic AI to instantiate the agent. Provide it with a name, AI model, system prompt, and response output data type. In Pydentic AI, you can add a tool, which essentially is just a Python function, to an agent's tool set dynamically using the tool decorator. Add the SQL functions to the agent's tool base. The run context argument, which is represented as CTX in the functions, gives the functions access to the dependencies object which contains the connection instance to an SQLite database. Now that we have everything set up, we can start testing the agent. In the main block, create the Chinook SQLite database engine instance and construct the dependencies object with the database engine instance. Then from the agent's object, use the run scene function to send a query request with the dependencies included. Let's ask, how many albums did Aerosmith release? From the log, as instructed in the system prompt, it calls the list tables function first to give the table list. Then it calls describe table function twice for the identified table to get the column metadata of those two tables. Once the agent has all the information it needs, it will then generate a SQL statement and use the run SQL function to get the answer. If we just do a quick validation by manually writing the SQL statement. One album called Big Ones returned for Aerosmith. We can also use natural language to add or delete a record. For example, I can simply say, add a new artist called JJ, and it will add a record to the designated table the two requests I've shown so far are used for one-time request purposes only. It won't remember the inputs or outputs from previous runs. One of the main reasons is to keep token usage as minimum as possible. If you need to retain the message history, for example, if you're working on a project and you need the agent to remember the outputs from previous run, in that case, from the response object, we can use new message or old messages method to return messages from previous runs. And that's everything I will be covering in this tutorial. Hopefully, you find the video useful. If there are any other AI agent tutorials you would like me to cover, leave them in the comments below. Also, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.